Hello students and welcome back to the course. I know that you have probably heard me talk about something called a book of shadows. Um, when I started practicing Wicca and quantum physics and healing, quantum healing, I was told that it would be great if I could be a journal of my experiences and things that I learned. So sometimes the book of shadows can be something like a guidebook um, it might contain recipes it might contain meditations or uh, feelings or things or how you feel how you understand things or if you have done a reading for somebody it might also contain some of that information so what is the book of shadows so a book of shadows is a witch's personal journal of his or her magical experiences and here you keep track of your spells, rituals, and other things related to your development as a magician. It's like a cook's collection of recipes. And often you will hear the words grimoire, a book of shadows used interchangeably, although some differences existed in earlier times. In my mind, a grimoire is more of um a collection of spells and just that whether um a book of shadows is more a combination of the things that we talked before a book of shadows might also include his author's musings or insights related to a spell as well as her dreams feelings and other um asides so how to learn to sense energy Magic spells draw upon the energies within you and around you. We've talked about that before. If you're going to become a successful spell worker, you'll benefit from learning to tap into the vast storehouse of energy that's available to you. Although energy currents flow in and around us all the time, invisibly wafting through our environment, most people don't pay attention to them. However, you can develop an awareness of them and doing so, will enhance your spell work. So we're going to try this exercise to hone your ability to sense energy. Let's say that you enter a building you've never seen or been before. Notice your reactions. Do you feel comfortable, welcome, at ease? Or do you experience apprehension or hesitation? Do you want to continue further into the building or withdraw? This relates to an ancient Chinese magical system known as Feng Shui. Some people call it Feng Shui. Or go to several different places, perhaps hill on a hilltop and then near the body of water and finally deep into the woods. Spend some time sensing the vibes there. How do you feel in these different spots? Consider not just the obvious things such as wind or sun, or dumbness, but also your personal reactions. Do you feel more enlightened in one place or another? Do you feel calm or agitated in a particular spot? Even if your impressions seem weird, don't discount them. Now go to several different places in a town or city. How, what do you experience there? How do you react to this faster pace? Does the energy seem more chaotic than it did in the natural places you visited? Or do you find the energy invigorating or stressful, exciting or draining? Also, go outside at night and look at the sky. What do you see and sense? Many people are afraid of the dark. Are you? And if so, why? In the world of magic, nighttime relates to mystery, the subconscious, and the realm beyond our everyday activities. In some magical traditions, nighttime is the goddess time, when the feminine force is most active. So pay attention to your own experiences and remember to know them in your book of shadows. Go outside at dawn and again at dusk. Then these interim times between day and night are known as limital zones. All around you, things are changing. Because change is essential to spell work, you can align yourself with these transitions to perform powerful magic. Pay attention to the energetic shifts you sense at day and night switch places. In Module 8, which comes soon, we'll look more closely at the energies inherent in moon's phases, the Earth's cycle around the Sun, 
and other passages that can enhance or hamper your spell work. You'll also learn how to time your spells to take advantage of the powers of nature and the cosmos that are available to you at various times throughout the year. Now, we all have the experience of entering a place of reverence and sanctuary, whether it's a church or temple, or a meditation room at a yoga center, or a grove of trees in a peaceful, natural setting. As soon as you step inside this special place, you sense a shift in the energy. You may feel serene, safe, suddenly removed from the business outside, or at once with something larger than yourself. When you do spells or rituals, you want to go to a spot where you feel this sort of heightened awareness, connection, and peace. This is a place of reinforced spell work. You need to leave the mundane world behind temporarily and sleep into the world of magic. Creating sacred space is just as important as preparing yourself for spell work. Maybe you're fortunate enough to have a place to call your sanctuary, a room in your home, or a lovely private spot in your jar. However, any place where you practice magic as your temple, any place you treat with reverence, is a sacred space. Your personal temple needn't to be elaborate or large, like the ancient and awe-inspiring religious structures in India that occupy many acres. You can create a special area for magical and spiritual practice in a corner of a room, on your back porch, or on the roof of your apartment building. In fact, if you live with people who might not understand or think your beliefs, you may decide it's best to use a low-key, unobtrusive place to do your magical work. You can place a vase of flowers, a candle, a colorful scarf, and a pretty stone on a shelf or dresser to designate your special place. You know the significance behind these everyday items, but no one else will. Now let's talk about between worlds. When you prepare yourself to cast a spell or enact a ritual, you suspend your everyday concept of reality for a period of time. You expand your perception of the universe and your place in it and get in touch with energies beyond your own. By entering the space and time between the worlds, as is often called, you can connect with the spirits who reside there. You acknowledge their presence by inviting them into your sacred space. You agree to accept physical manifestations of their divine presence, and you agree to suspend your sense of disbelief in order to accept the magic and psychic experiences are indeed possible and even desirable. At first, this might be difficult, as the rational mind often requires some type of tangible proof that a spiritual experience has occurred. This is where trusting yourself and the entities you work with comes in. Often, your interactions will be subtle, but you'll learn in time to recognize gentle signs. You probably won't hear a clap of thunder to assure you that the goddesses and gods have acknowledged your work. Then again, you must, you just might. So, let's draw the distinction between sacred space and a magic circle. What makes a sacred space different from a magic circle? A circle is a consciously constructed space that partially overlaps both our material world and the divine world. The resulting area is said to be between the worlds, no holy in one or the other. Sacred space is a place of peace and calm, but is not necessarily between the worlds. Sacred space goes into the circle, or it can simply exist on its own. Here, I have shown you an altar, which is more of a sacred space, but as you can see, we can have different spaces here that could be considered sacred spaces, but no, definitely not minded circles. Creating a sacred space. The purpose of defining and consecrating a sacred space is to give yourself a dedicated realm in which to perform magic and ritual where you can move beyond your ordinary world when you choose. You are in essence raising a temple, so not necessarily a brick and mortar one. For meditation, worship, 
divination, spell casting, or any other aspect of magical practice you wish to do here. You can create a more or less permanent sacred space or a temporary one depending on your intentions and circumstances. Now, sometimes, most of the times, you need to clean your sacred space. So once you determine the location of your sacred space, take a broom and sweep the area thoroughly to clear away dust, dirt, and clutter. This is what witches really use brooms for, not to fly through the sky. After you finish physically sweeping the area, focus on cleansing the psychic space. In this way, you remove unwanted energies or influences any bad vibes that might linger there. Begin in the east and work your way counterclockwise around the room in a circular fashion. Sweep the air from the floor up to the high as you can comfortably reach. When you have gone around your area three times, lay the broom on the floor inside the circle and visualize all the negative energy breaking up and dissolving. Some spell workers also like to smudge the area with the smoke from burning sage. Light a sage wand or bundle, which you can find on a new age sub or online, or a stick of sage incense, and walk in a circle, starting in the east, letting the smoke walk through the area, and stand in the center of your space and feel the fresh, light, clean energy all around you. The next step is, of course, to dedicate your space. The next step, like I said, is to dedicate your sacred space and you can begin by anointing the room or other area you've chosen with frank frankincense, essential oil, or any other oil you prefer. Just put a little dab in each corner, starting in the east and moving clockwise around the space, creating a cross within a circle. The symbol represents the balance of female and male energies, the circle of creation, the four directions, and the four elements. Yes, we will talk about this later on. You may also ought to place a stone or crystal that has a meaning for you, as you can see, and this altar on the bottom for each of the four compass directions. If your sacred space is outdoors, you can bury the stones in the ground, or you might like to design symbols that signify peace, holiness, protection, or power. Some people display images of beloved deities on the sacred spaces. If you wish, you can create an elaborate ritual for them dedicating your space. That's up to you. Now, practicing, as you can see, the lady on the right-hand side of the picture. After you finish setting up your sacred space, you'll want to protect it from intrusive energies. If you design your home or another building as a sacred space, consider the following. Empower a mirror to deflect negative energy and hang it on your front door, facing our. This is also a popular feng shui cure. Any destructive energy that comes towards you will bounce back away from your space. Bury protective stones such as onyx, hematite, or peridot and near your doorstep, porch, or steps. Put a bunch of fresh basil in a pot with two quarts of water and simmer for 10 minutes. Then strain it out the basil, save it for other spells, and wash your doorstep with the basil infused water. Hunt a protective symbol on your door or near the entrance of your home. A pentagram, a Pennsylvania Dutch hex sign, one of the image to associate with protection. Using salt water, draw pentagrams of other protection symbols on the doors and windows of your home. You can also hang braids or wreaths of garlic, onions, and hot peppers in your home. Please don't eat them. Set a cloth of garlic on each of your windowsills to absorb any negative energy before it can enter your home. Toss the old cloves and replace them with fresh ones on each new moon. You can also hang an iron horseshoe above your front door with the open end turned up. If you can or choose not to consider your entire home, or another building or sacred space, you can adapt the previous list according to your area. For example, if you have designated a portion of your room, you can place a stone associated with protection there, 
or lay dry basil leaves in your sacred space, or position a draw, or pentagram, or the protective symbol there, a sprinkle some sea salt. You can also sprinkle spray salt water in the area, or set a clove of garlic in your space. As you go about any daily routines that take place in your sacred space, especially if you dedicated your entire home, be mindful of the energies around you. To attract positive energy, dust, mop, wash, and wipe countertops using a clockwise motion. To dispel unwanted energies, use a counterclockwise motion. Well, I hope you enjoy some of this information about how to protect and dedicate your sacred space today. Next time, we're going to talk about how to set up your altar, cast a circle, what we will call probably Circle Casting 101 and how to open our circle to nature's magic. I'll see you soon.